Hello, my friends, and welcome to another great FOGO workout. This particular routine focuses especially on hip flexibility and core strength. Some of the moves are a little bit more challenging than others, so please don't hesitate to modify or take a break if you need to. And if you're an essential oils user, I hope you're putting on something energizing like peppermint diluted in some carrier oil. Give it a deep inhale, get that energy up, and let's start standing up. We're gonna begin with some breathing, just to sort of get centered and come into the moment. So begin with an inhale and then an exhale. And as you exhale, press all of the air out of your belly using your pelvic floor to lift and your abs pulling in. Inhale, expand all the way around, and then exhale, lift your pelvic floor, pull your belly button in toward your spine. Inhale, expand all the way around into your belly and your ribs. And then exhale, lift your pelvic floor, pull your belly button to spine. We're gonna do the same breathing. That's kind of our common breathing throughout the whole practice, but we're gonna pull in a squat. So this is a goddess pose squat. Toes are turned out, knees are pressing back, sit straight down and up. And when you come up, I want you to exhale. Inhale on your way down and then exhale on your way up. Now you can keep going with this very simple squat or you can continue on to the next part with me where we're gonna strongly stand into our right leg and then twist lifting our left knee. So stand strongly into your right leg and twist toward that left, exhaling each time you twist. Just a couple more and then we will switch sides. So now you're standing strong into your left leg and you are twisting toward your right. Strong core, belly pulls to spine each time you exhale. Use your balance, this is a very challenging move. Keep going and then we're gonna do four on each side. So switch sides and four, three, two, one. Switch sides and remember to exhale as you twist. Pull that belly button toward your spine. Lift your pelvic floor as you twist. And you are done, release. I'm gonna to turn to the side, but you don't have to. You're gonna move into a chair pose. Sit way back, make sure your pelvic floor is lifted and your low abs are pulled in. This will help protect your back. Now swoop your arms back into a flat back position, airplane pose. This is a nice stretch for your hamstrings. Back into chair pose and then exhale into airplane. Inhale into chair pose, sitting back, knees don't go beyond your toes, and then exhale, belly lifts toward your spine, flat back, airplane. Change it up just a little bit to your arms forward, palms up. It's like you're offering something, and then airplane. Again, offer your hands forward, strong core, and then exhale into airplane. Keep going with this, really strong through your core, lifted through your pelvic floor, and feeling that hamstring stretch when you move into the airplane pose with your arms back and your back flat. Now exhale, pull belly button to spine, fold forward, bending one knee at a time. Just take your time with this and feel into this beautiful hamstring stretch. You might want to grab two blocks and just switch your knee bend back and forth. So one knee bends, the other leg is straight, and then switch sides. Finish up, and now we're gonna move on to the floor. So remove your blocks to the, to the front of your mat. You might need them later. And come onto your back. We're gonna do a really important test. This next part may be too advanced if you have diastasis recti. So that's really what we're checking to see. Engage your pelvic floor. So lift your pelvic floor toward your head and pull in your low belly. Now we're gonna tuck the chin toward the chest and lift your head and shoulders off the floor. Feel your belly. Do you feel firmness? Do you feel some tension? Or do you feel a gapping or a doming? If you feel the gapping or the doming or the tenting, then I want you to keep your head down for the next part. 
But if you felt some tension, some firmness, and you did not feel that gapping, then go ahead and re-tuck your chin, re-lift your head, and we're gonna move into a knee to chest and then straightening that leg. Same leg, eight times. Keep breathing, exhale each time you straighten the leg out. Now again, if you see a gapping in your belly or a tenting or a bulging in your belly, then that means you need to stop and put your head down. If you want a little bit more action, then you can lift your arms off the floor and your head a little bit more off the floor as well. This is the last one and hold it. Hold that leg straight. Keep the belly pulled in, in, in. Your head and shoulders lifted only if that's appropriate for you. Remember, it can be on the floor the whole time throughout that move. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. And so be really honest with yourself and, and repeat the process. So again, lift your pelvic floor, pull your low belly to spine. Only if it's appropriate, lift your head off the floor. Notice how my palms are facing up so that I'm not gripping the mat. Keep making sure that your belly is looking good. Everything's pulled in. There's no gapping. There's no doming. If you're good, then lift your head and shoulders a little more off the floor and your arms off the floor as well. Keep that belly pulled in, in, in. The pelvic floor is lifted and hold. Hold it, keep breathing, keep breathing, exhaling, and release. Head down, knees flop apart, relaxing and releasing the pelvic floor, the abs. Take a deep belly breath. And now you're gonna come and scoot yourself to the back edge of your yoga mat. And just mirror me here. You want the arm or the elbow directly under your shoulder. Knees can be bent. Lift your pelvic floor, pull your belly button inward toward your spine, and like a clamshell, you're gonna open the leg, feet together, you're just gonna lift the knee upward. And really do this with control. You wanna feel your core nice and strong. Pelvic floor is engaged, your low abs are pulled in, your body is really straight like a plank. It's just the leg that's moving, or the hip that's moving. And remember to keep those feet together. This last one, hold it. Hold it, stay strong, elbow under your shoulder, super strong. One more breath and release down. Now, top leg goes in front of the bottom and you are going to lift up onto that bottom straight leg and you can use your fingertip of your top arm to kind of support you at first or place the top arm on your opposite shoulder to keep it in place so it doesn't hike up toward your ear. Use your obliques to pulse up toward the ceiling. Pulse and hold the last one. Hold it here, hold it. Body is straight like a plank, core is strong and you're breathing and then release. Now this last one is a little bit more intense. Your hand of the bottom arm is right where your elbow used to be. Now you're gonna bring your arm up and that top leg, you're gonna move it toward the elbow, same side elbow. So if you can't do this, it's totally okay. Just return to a side plank, maybe even drop your lower knee. You might fall a little bit, that's okay, I did. Just keep going, try to take it with control and you can absolutely go slower than I'm showing. See how I am wobbling all over the place? It happens, hold this last one, hold it, keep your core strong, and then come on down onto your knees. In this position, you're on your elbows, elbows are under your shoulders, lift your feet off the floor so your knees are on the floor, and you're pulling your pubic bone toward your chin, kind of flattening out your low back, lifting your pelvic floor, belly button lifts to your spine, and just holding it and breathing. Keep holding and breathing, really pulling that pubic bone toward your chin, lifting your belly button toward your spine, and then come onto your other side. It's a lot of work for your core. We're gonna repeat the whole sequence, starting with that clamshell move. So feet together, knees, knee, top knee lifts. In this position, you wanna make sure that your pelvic floor is engaged, your low abs are pulled in, and you're really just lifting that top knee toward the ceiling. Feet stay together. You should really feel this in your outer hips. Try to keep your core strong and your body straight like a plank, and keep breathing. This last one, hold it. Hold that knee lifted toward the ceiling. Keep holding it. 
You're still lifted in that plank and now return your hips to the ground. Move into the position where we are pulsing up using our obliques, bottom leg is straight, top leg is bent, and we pulse up, up, up. Your top hand can be supporting on the ground or it can be actually pressing into the bottom shoulder to make sure that that shoulder doesn't hunch toward the ear. Hold the position, hold this pose. and then release your hips to the ground. Hand goes right in place where your elbow was, where your bent elbow was, that's where your hand goes. And now we're gonna move into that really challenging knee to elbow move. Remember to feel that your core is really strong. A strong pelvic floor, an engaged pelvic floor, and an engaged core and steady breathing is gonna help you keep your balance. So when in doubt, really draw up that pelvic floor and draw in those low abs even more. Hold this last one, hold it, hold it, hold it, and come on down. Back onto the knees, take a moment to just release your low back, and we go back onto the elbows, knees on the ground, feet lifted off the ground, pull that pubic bone toward your chin and hold. Your belly button lifts up, up, up toward your spine, trying to keep your back flat and not rounded. Your back is flat, but you're really strong through that core, no sagging. Now, sit back onto your heels and just release your wrists. You've been really working hard on those wrists, so up and down with magic hands, fingertips down toward the floor and then up toward the ceiling and come back onto your hands and knees. Moving into crazy donkey kicks, this move really gets your heart rate up. So strong through the core, tuck your toes under. And there will be an alternative in the upper corner if you don't wanna do this full move. Hover your knees off the floor, belly is strong. Now right leg, you kick it up toward the sky as you hop very lightly with your left foot. So kicking it up toward the sky, and remember you can follow the inset picture where you're simply lifting that leg up and down and not doing the hop. Okay, switch sides. If you were doing the modified version, keep doing the modified version with the left leg. If you were hopping, just be sure that you're not holding your breath. You're strong through the arms, and it's a lift of that left leg and a slight hop of the right leg. And come on down. That's pretty fun, isn't it? If you didn't get it the first time, try it again next time. Roll out your wrists. Again, a lot of work on those wrists. Pretend like you have gloves on your hand and you are pulling them off each side. That helps release your wrists. And come back onto your hands and knees. Lift your pelvic floor. Back is flat, abs are pulled in. Left leg goes behind, right, leg, right arm goes forward. Now sweep that arm and knee toward each other. Really drag your hand and your foot along the mat, really creating some resistance as you do this and exhale as you create that resistance. Strong core, belly pulls in. Now come up on your fists and bring your leg and hip around in circles five times. Make sure your arms stay, stay straight. You're probably gonna to wanna to kind of bend your elbow a little bit and lean into one side, but try not to. Now slowly, slow as molasses, step that left foot to the outside of your hands. And you can come up onto blocks or you can have your hands on the mat, whatever's comfortable for you. Move into a twist where you crawl your left hand up on your left thigh. Exhale, lifting your pelvic floor and pulling your belly button toward your spine as you twist just a little bit deeper. Inhale and exhale, sit your hips back, straightening that front leg. I really like to ease into this pose and just wiggle my hips around. Do this move in a way that feels really good for you. You might want blocks under your hands, but just feel that nice hamstring stretch in your left leg, the back of your left leg. Try to keep your back straight. And now bend that left knee, come back into that low lunge, and just breathe here for a moment. Inhale, really lengthen your spine, and exhale, sink into the pose. On your next exhale, whenever that is for you, shift back again into that same hamstring stretch. Again, using blocks under your hands if you need to, 
or placing your hands on the ground. Really ease into it, wiggling your hips if you need to, and try to keep your back flat and not rounded. Now inhale, come on forward. And we are gonna move so that your shoulder, it's like you're trying to work your, your left shoulder under your left thigh. Your hands are spread out to the sides like airplane arms, fingertips are on the floor. And then lift that back knee off the floor. So fingers are out to the side, fingertips are tended, arms are out to the side. Your left shoulder is working under that thigh and now hover the back knee, the right knee, just above the ground just above the ground, it's not touching. You're hovering that back knee just above and now release it all the way down. Work that front bent leg back so you're on your hands and knees and just take a moment to stretch in the opposite direction with that leg. Release your hips and then on an exhale, sit back into child's pose just for a tiny moment. So exhale, decompression breath, <sighs> sit back in child's pose. We are gonna repeat the same exact sequence on the other side. So lifted through the pelvic floor and strong through the core, right leg back, left arm forward, sweep. So you pull with resistance that left hand and the right foot against the yoga mat. Feel as you do this, this resistance created and this tension created as you exhale and pull belly button toward your spine. Now come up on your fists and circle that right leg around from the hip. Keep your arms straight and keep breathing. After five circles, you're gonna very, very slowly bring that leg forward. So let's do that now. So slowly bring the knee toward your shoulder and then step forward into that wide-legged lunge. Hands are on the inside of your right foot. So hold this position, this low lunge position, breathing deeply, sinking the hips down, and now twist. On the exhale, you twist a little bit deeper. Pull your belly button toward the spine, twisting. Your right hand is on your right thigh. And now sit your hips back. Your hands can be on the ground as shown or they can be up on yoga blocks, whatever feels best for you. Just breathe and ease into this. Now come on forward back into that low lunge. Hands are on the inside of the leg. I like to have mine up on blocks if you have them available. And just sink into this low lunge position, front knee bent. Now sit back and straightening that front knee, hands on either side of that leg on blocks or on the mat, sit back into that straight back hamstring stretch. So your hips are shooting straight back toward the back of the room. They can wiggle just a little bit if that feels good. Just breathe and then shift forward once again. Again, you're gonna work that right shoulder under your right thigh. Arms are out to the side like airplane arms. Fingertips are tented and lift the back knee off the floor if you can. So you can see how my arms are straight out to the sides and really holding this deep, deep pose. If you can't lift that back leg off the ground, it's totally okay. But if it is lifted, hover the knee down just above the floor right now. So the back knee is hovering just above the floor. This is a deep, deep hip stretch. And now set it all the way down. Hands come to the inside, work that leg, the front leg back stretch it in the opposite direction, come down and decompression breath, exhale, sit back onto your heels into a child's pose. I like to do a wide knee child's pose here, so feet together and knees nice and wide. Relax just for a beat. Now come up onto your knees and we're gonna do a new move here that's really gonna work your thighs. I want you to put your thumb underneath your rib cage and your fingertips on your hip point. Now make sure as you sit down, not all the way to your heels, but toward your heels, that your the distance between your fingers, between your thumb and your fingertips does not decrease. So don't let this happen. Don't let leaning forward happen. We want to keep our spine really straight as we eccentrically lower 
down toward our heels, but don't quite touch the heels. So lower down, strong core, exhale up. Lower down, strong core, strong legs, exhale up. Don't let your knees drift apart. Keep them firming together. Adduction, hip adduction. Keep your knees coming together. Don't let them drift apart. Last one here. And now we're gonna change the move just a little bit. Sit on your heels for a tiny moment and now lift again. And this time you're gonna lift one hip at a time up and then the other side up. So you're never actually touching the heels, but you're swooping from side to side, lifting one hip up and then the other. It's really working your obliques. So lift up on one side and then the other. Swoop, 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 and relax. Again, if you didn't get that this time, try it again and you'll get it next time. It's a great thigh burner. Now come onto your uh, elbows just for a moment for Sphinx Pose and then lower all the way onto your belly. Straighten your legs behind you, nice and firm, keeping your feet on the floor. Lift your upper body, arms bent, up off the floor three times. This is our last time here, last time lifting up and then down. Now come up onto your elbows and bring your left arm in front of you and your right arm sweeps back to catch hold of your foot. Press your foot back into your hand to lift your chest and then go ahead and relax toward the floor and you move into a, a quadriceps stretch, front of the thigh stretch. Just hold here, breathing deeply. Try to keep your knees close together. That right knee is probably gonna wanna wing out to the side, but don't let it. Keep the front of your pelvis pressing into the floor. And then release your foot. You're gonna go straight into the other side. So press your foot back into your left hand now. And then as you exhale, draw that body down, which draws your foot toward your buttocks. And hold that front of the thigh stretch, keeping your knees close together and keeping the front of your pelvis down into the mat. Breathing deeply. Now release the foot. And we're gonna go back into those three Superman lifts. So lift the upper body off the floor and down. Two more times, up and down. One more time, up and down. This time, both knees bend up. Feet, your knees stay close together. And press your feet back into your hands to lift your chest off the mat. And then exhale. Bring your chest down toward the mat, which also brings your feet toward the buttocks. If you want to try this with a yoga strap, you, t you absolutely can. It's going to help you quite a bit if you don't have the flexibility. So breathe into this. Your head is relaxed on the floor. Your hips are pressing down into the mat. They're gonna to want to arch up off the mat, but press your pelvis and the hips down into the mat. Finish up that quad stretch with just one more breath. Release the legs and then tuck your toes. Cross your feet. Come up into a seated position and let's just seal in this practice by bringing our arms up overhead, inhaling, and then exhale, lift your pelvic floor, pull your belly button in, and prayer hands to your heart. Thank you so much for joining me on this fairly intense, uh, extreme hip flexibility and core strength workout. I hope that you got a good sweat in, in this 23, 24 minute routine, and that you feel fantastic. As always, remember to eat clean, move every day, and you will shine brighter. We'll see you next time.